roebuck we got last week. Um, spent the week in a chill out at two degrees, so it's uh, nice and nice and cool. Um, all the sort of little uh, parasites and bits and pieces that are that hang on these things, like you've got a ked here uh, and ticks, uh, they're all dead. So we don't have to worry about those for coming off the carcass and uh, getting on us. Um, we're going to show you now is just a, a, basically skinning the carcass. Um, all carcasses have legally got to be tagged, uh, unless it's for personal consumption. But this is a uh, this is the tag, and that's it's got its individual ID. So if you're going to sell this carcass on, it's got full traceability, and that's really really important. Not the best at skinning, but um, I'm sure people can do it a lot faster. But like I say, it's just a case of you know no massive hurry. Just got to make sure you end up with a nice clean carcass at the end. Um, so I'm going to use here. This is a ball tipped knife. This helps you sort of run up the inside of the uh, the skin without. Um, uh, pointing or damaging the carcass. So what I'm doing is running up the insides here, right up to the tip of the leg. I'll do that on both sides. There we go. I'm going to go up the inside of the leg as well. That's when they've been uh, in the chiller a while, you'll find the skin or the fur contracts around the carcass. And that's really, I mean, I always hang and age my carcasses in the fur because the, the actual the fur itself acts like a natural dry bag. The thing is with rows, they're very, very lean. And if you take the, the, fur, the, the fur off it, you're just exposing raw muscle to the air and that will dry it out, uh, which means that whilst it'll still age deliciously, you'll have a relatively thick part of the, um, the hide, uh, really thick part of the, the actual, the meat itself, which you can't really do a lot with, you have to trim away. So what we're doing, I just pull this off very, very well, gently. So well, this is a gambrel. This is just a skinning rig it's by Donington Deer Management. They um, it just makes light work of dealing with bigger carcasses. I mean, it's a complete waste of time on, the, on something as small as a row. But if you were going to use a have like a big fallow or a red deer or a seeker you have to try and get up to do a gralic or a site inspection with or just like a, a site cull if you're doing a, a number of deer it's really really handy and um, just for today it's, it's hanged on not in my larder doing outside for demos it's a bit easier to demonstrate really outside Really do is make sure we don't sort of. I mean, I've already taken quite a bit of the um, what you call that, the bacon straps on the belly off this by mistake, so it's not going to be the tidiest job. as well because I've done it here you've got to be really careful when you pull the skin down off here because you will nick the tight spot just there and that can pull the this part of the, the muscle out so well I didn't want to do that I guess it's handy to see so just be really careful when you put two pull around here so
damp towel just helps get the uh, any pins which come off the truck so it's this time of year they're going from winter coat to summer coat and the pins do come out so so easily yeah, there you go it's a nice cleanish carcass a bit of a shame about the belly part but yeah that's the uh, uh entrance that's the exit looks worse than it is a lot of this is just where the blood has sort of seeped under the muscle um layers but yeah we'll get her in there get them inside and uh cut them out mm -hmm. 